Neither going forwards nor backwards can be a sign of confusion, don't you think? I'm going to be talking about Nigeria's confused relationship with her elders. The other day when encountering someone I would term as an elder by virtue of his notable maturity, I found myself wondering how to greet or even begin relating to this person. Am I expected to curtsy, call him sir, offer some sort of show of veneration to appease whatever expectations he might have with regards to how the power dynamic ought to play out? Of course, these expectations could all have been in my head and not in his. Whereas other countries may have to negotiate their relationship with the older generation, in Nigeria, it's made more complex by the fact that we have a strong plurality of cultures that have set a mold for how these things ought to play out. And whether we like it or not, these are our reference points. Indeed, many have blamed the stagnation in Nigeria's development on our inability to cut the apron strings of the elders. And some of them, in turn, have been more than happy to convert the same apron strings into a noose by which to suffocate us. We stand seemingly idly by whilst octogenarians run the country. We say we're waiting for power to be handed over to us. As we say here, we will surely wait long. At the other extreme, we seem to exhibit a disconnect with the elders in a way that's not evident with the generation before us. Amidst the stalking COVID-19 pandemic, Dr. Chikwe Hekwazu stated recently that whereas young people are a major driver of the virus, the elderly are the ones paying the price most of the time. With figures showing that three out of five deaths were among the over 50s or the elderly. I even heard of a tragic case of an elderly person who was only discovered in their home days after dying from COVID-19, alone and neglected. This is surely alien to our cultural heritage. For Nigeria to move forward, there needs to be a handing over of the baton from one generation to the next that speaks of mutual respect and effectively says, you've run your race, now it's my turn. We don't need to wait till we're on the receiving end of this fake veneration and neglect to realize we have a societal problem. Elders need to spend time with the young and to understand and develop a healthy respect for them as the noun generation. Children and grandchildren need to be actively encouraged to develop a relationship with the elders amongst them, as this in turn helps in shaping their character positively growing up. To aid the transition of power, more of us younger ones, and I count myself among the younger ones, need to get involved in governance. To address issues of neglect, government needs to be pressured to prioritize healthcare provision for the elderly by way of health insurance. And really, it ought to bother all of us that in this day and age, the systems for obtaining pensions rely on an opt-in process nicknamed I'm Alive. In the words of my elder sister, the right response to the elderly is neither deference nor indifference. And ultimately, the greatest nations are the ones that make provision for the transition of the weakest amongst us. I hope you'd agree. Yeah, um, uh, for me, again, uh, um, I, I like your angle to, you know, your advocacy. You, but um, all of this, what you are simply saying is mentoring. Okay. Mentoring. That's what I understand it to okay. be. But the, the plenty grammar <laughs> will always confuse uh, the everyday man. <laughs> and that's your brand. That's, mm. that's why I like it. <laughs> but to take it to the man on the street, mm. it's, um, you're talking about mentoring and provision for the elderly. The elderly should mentor the young ones and okay. then the young ones should in turn provide you know, facilities for the elderly. Okay. That's you know, what I understand by it. It's, if it's from that angle, fantastic. Why we have some of the problems that we have today is that there are no more mentoring, mentorship. You know, so you find out that there is no transition even from the old, young to the old, okay. except those that are elevated to come chop at the table. Uh, you know, and so once you are elevated to come chop, and then the way the elderly carry themselves, you also want to carry yourself like that. Do you know who I am? Mm. And you know, so, but if there is a system where the elderly understand that, look, it is time to leave the stage, you know, stay at the back end, but you are properly, properly mentored young ones, who would you, you believe will take over, you know, after you, and then you will relax and know fully whether they will provide for you, even when you know, you are no more able to provide for yourself. Mm -hmm. But in the absence of that, that's why you see the older, the older ones who always want to remain on the stage, even will die there. Mm. You know, because they know they have only amassed so much for themselves. In some cases, some of these younger ones, they feel they are trying to secure by 
keeping funds for without teaching them how to manage it will end up mismanaging. Mm. Okay. I've spoken plenty English. No, no, you've spoken. Me, me, I even want to talk on mentoring subsequent, but yeah. let's, let's yeah. do that. Yeah. What, what does Seydou have to say? It's very interesting advocacy. Um, in a way, I, I look at it from cultural uh, cultural perspective. I agree with the liberals. The only uh, portion there is, you know, the older ones refusing to leave the stage. So we have those those old ones, you know, who've been there since independence, still ruling us today or playing key roles in our polity without allowing young ones to move up and take responsibility. And I think in a way that has also accounted for uh, some of the challenges we're, we're, we're facing as a people today. And you cannot divorce this from some of our cultural practice. There's so much reference to all the people. You're not, you're not allowed to be creative. And that kind of dampens, you know, uh, say do are you saying you reverence know, and i think we need to do sorry are you saying reverence re, 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 yeah re, we yeah. revere them you okay. know all, the older ones the okay. mini god you don't want to obey them you don't mm -hmm. want to go against what even even Challenge though them. their ideas yeah. might be a king yeah. you know or you don't want to go against them because our culture generally teaches that we should you know submit to our older ones mm. you know our parents uncles and whatever you know and that doesn't allow in other clients need to be convinced that you know what the older one is saying well here yeah, you dare not you know and in that space there's a lot of anger there's a lot of resentment and the circle just goes on and on until we find a way to break it yeah so it's a big problem that needs to be addressed the older one there must be clear transition you can't remain there forever you can be there and mentor the younger ones but allow them to make their mistakes you know, allow for that space to be open for new ideas. That would be my own contribution. Mm. Um, my, I don't, I, I, I don't even think it's a, for me, I don't think it's a confusing relationship with, with, with elders. I think um, people just need to move out of the way. Um, <laughs> I, I, I'm tired of um, just simple facts. You know, I, when I'm speaking to a room full of people, uh, young people, um, like 35 and under, 40 or under sometimes. And just like how many of, how many people own their homes, right? And like maybe if there's 100 people, maybe three or four shyly raised their hand. And then if you were in, if you ask that question 30, 40 years ago of the 30-year-olds and the, you know, um, early for you know 30 year olds of that era generation and down i mean most people in the room would have owned their homes their mm. properties mm. so i don't really see it as confusing when a bunch of people have held on to because a home ownership for me is a big deal because that's yeah. how you can get on the I table a lot of the time we're talking about getting on the table but you don't have the young person you're talking about including doesn't have an asset doesn't have money is broke busted and disgusted right because some folks have decided to stifle the pipeline and just stay there and not move out of the way so for me i see it as an economic thing and people just need to move out of the freaking way because it's really it's really annoying to see generation after generation and each generation getting um, um financially stifled except for you know this uh, and, and then they have the nerve to come out and say oh you, yahoo all young people know is yahoo and big brother and all this very then uh, <laughs> yeah, very uh, very derogatory statements. And yep. you're like, but you're, you've been in the same position like for the last 30, 35 years. When yep. last did you invite, did you deliberately, intentionally invite a young person to a board meeting and see how that works? Mm. I mean, the Indians do it, the Germans do it. How many multi-generational companies do we have in Nigeria? None. You know, so they should just get out of the way. There's nothing. Yeah, no, I, I guess the, the issue of we do now. the, we conf do. the we confusion was just that. Now. Yeah, no, no, my politics now is okay. multi generational. <laughs> no, I guess the Fun issue of, the issue of confusion was more that on the one hand we're busy revering them and not taking the stand, and on the other hand we're neglecting them. But you know, maybe that'll take another advocacy to, to thrash out. Okay, we've stated our case in a bid to pave the way forward. Now it's your turn to state your case and enrich the conversation. On EFCC, ICPC, and transparency, Ikenna Ogwogwo says, 
That old boy got me. <laughs> I know what you mean, Ikenna. Some of, some of us are still seriously amused by Libra says, God, God, where are you? <laughs> I know this didn't detract from the seriousness of the subject matter, though. On colonial mentality or failure that can't be whitewashed, Ikumelo Aribi says, it's good every time to hear Nigerians analyze and talk about Nigeria. Nigeria has never had a leader that will channel the course and direct direction of this our Nigeria. Nigeria needs leaders of quality, wise, knowledgeable, with mission and values. Without above mentioned qualities, we're not going anywhere. Today, our leaders are bleep, 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 just appeasing some people without thinking about what's good for the country. So Nigeria still has a longer way to go. We are the capital of poverty in the world, an oil industry country. What a tragedy. Well, Ikumelo, the story is still being written. It may well be one of redemption when the dust settles. After all, are we not still here? On greedy accumulation, Phantom 2K, a regular watcher, 2K10, has a bit to say. I know this isn't very realistic, he says, especially considering the administration that is currently in power. But the death penalty should be introduced for those that misappropriate public funds to enrich themselves. What these governors stroke leaders don't realize is that when they embezzle public funds to enrich themselves, they deprive the people of basic daily necessities, which leads to an increase in crime, poverty, hunger, and ultimately lowers the life expectancy. So indirectly, these governors slash leaders are committing murder. So they should get a taste of their own medicine to teach their cohorts and citizens enticed a lesson. Once again, we appreciate this platform and the great people behind it. Please continue to fight the good fight. Wow, Phantom, the death penalty? Not to, make, uh, not to make light of the seriousness of the point you have made, but would half of Nigeria not be on the death row? Thank you for joining in our advocacy by sharing your thoughts, though. Keep the conversation going on our social media platforms, on Facebook, Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG, or on Twitter and Instagram, at Plus TV Africa, hashtag The Advocate NG. To catch up with previous broadcasts, go to plustvafrica.com forward slash The Advocate. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel, Plus TV Africa. After the break, Simi puts out an urgent advertisement. Just wait and see. Five panelists, five topical issues, no holds barred. For me, it's not knowledge that's lacking. It's that greed. It's that mentality where you feel you deserve to take your own and take it infinitely and let everybody else just manage however they will manage. We're almost becoming hardwired to try and cheat. I would, you know, suggest that we begin to hold our leaders accountable. There was a time in this country when yes. things actually work. I don't think that any organization should be above the law. And I think one of the challenges we have in this country is about governance across the board. What, what I'm saying is that it doesn't really affect us in Nigeria. I don't know what we can do if the system is already corrupted. We've been warned as a continent of the influx of the Chinese. If you don't repay your debt, they will just colonize you.